foggy night, the MF Merrick was bound on a southerly course towards Portage. Suddenly, from out of the fog, emerged the RP Raymond. The Merrick went down quickly, and the sea swallowed the ship, seemingly forever. When people think of Michigan, they think of the automotive industry. With the demise of it comes a heavy blow. Several years ago, we had a lot of people leave the Saginaw area because there was a, a lack of job opportunity. And so that caused us to lose a lot of our students. When we have fewer students, there's fewer dollars. We have a very fixed budget, maybe $200 a year that we can order different things. I think that there are bigger and better places where there's more opportunity, but this will always be home. I don't like school. Like, for me, I want a little more challenge in life. Something will make you think. Students these days want to be engaged. They want to learn by doing something. Our way of thinking about how we educate kids and what we hope for them needs to be just as imaginative as the technology that is driving everything. I'm a... Uh... Dr. James Delgado. I was the chief scientist on the mission to map the Titanic. Out here at Thunder Bay, there's a lot of shipwrecks, but not all of them have been found. And so what we're gonna do is go find one. And yes, there will be adventure. We was gonna do something out of the box, something different, something that people from SAG and all don't normally do. I'm a small town guy. I've never done something on this big of a scale. What now is encompassed in a Sony Vial laptop was once inaccessible to us on ships. And now, with the ability to take millions of data points that we collect from sonar, run them through an Intel processor, and come out with these maps that really enable us to peer down hundreds of feet to find something at the bottom of the sea. Because it's so deep out here, we use the multi-beam sonar itself. We're actually going back and forth, painting the actual seafloor with sound. We were looking at the multi-beam for things that looked man-made or unnatural. It was clear. We got everything from the side scan right then and there. It looked just like a pirate ship. It was suspense, just like, oh, let's get there, let's get there, let's go. We were expected to do everything. We had to pick out what we were gonna look for first with the ROV. We had to tell the divers what to look for. The first priority, search for a name. We can start the scent. You got something right in front of you. Oh, oh my god. Oh. There she is. <laughs> As a high school team, you don't get a chance to, to see all the different things that are actually out there outside of Saginaw. And this kind of opened my eyes. I feel more confident now. And it's just like something you do that really makes you change. When I got to like, go out there and experience all this different technology, it made me realize, you know, there's so much that the world has to offer. This experience changed my entire outlook. It's something that affected me more than anything. I had dreams, but I never thought that I'd be able to accomplish them. But now I really see that I can achieve my dreams. 
education at its best engages and inspires. And what they're doing is leaving behind a legacy, a legacy of a ship found, of stories resolved, of a place that people can visit and connect to. In many ways, this isn't just a ship hunt. This is a lesson about life.